Hi, witches. Hey, witches. <laughs> hey, witches. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the difference between pagan, Wiccan, or witch, discussing the difference. I'm so excited to go through this topic because it's where a lot of people get hung up, and we are going to go through so much information. Hold on tight, take notes, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can finally get our name in our yes. actual yes. little link. But if you like this video, hit like. If not, do nothing. <laughs> um, we hope you enjoy. Thank Bye, you. witches. Thank you for watching. Bye, witches. Bye, witches. Mm -hmm. yes, so um, it is 6.05. And since this is a big topic, I just want to get going. Kat's going to continue to try to let people in as we start. But uh, the most natural place for me to start the discussion of which Wiccan pagan is going into pagan. So pagan, paganism, neo-pagan. Uh, I told you guys in the last meetup, neo just means new world. It just means like we didn't exist 2,000 years ago. But as a neo-pagan, um, there's that encompasses all nature-based religions. So there's huge discussions around whether Hindus and Native Americans really fall into this order and they have to want that. We can't just assign that to them. But that was one of the discussions I found too. So if you find yourself being drawn to the Native American culture, to Hinduism, to Buddhism, uh, that all falls in line with the same thing that people of the pagan religions believe. It's old world country. So that's a good place to start. Pagan, the word actually meant from the old country. So if you call yourself a pagan and that's the only label you give yourself, these are the things that it would imply. You're nature-based, which means that you live in harmony and you honor nature. It's pre-Christian, which means that it started over 2000 years ago. Uh, it's a non-religious. Non-religious means that there's no text that you follow. You follow your intuition, your heart, your instincts, you know, the universal signs that you see. And then a big one is that there's equality for all life. So in pagan religions, there was not a dominance of masculine versus feminine or that people held rights over animals, that it, we all lived in harmony. There was equality for all life. And then the last part of being a pagan is that the divine is not something obscure and distant. It's actually living right now with us in the land, in everything and within us. So this is where when people invoke or evoke, they're calling out something of themselves that they already possess because we're all part of that star matter. Like we're all made up of the same thing that the stars are made of. And that's getting more into paganism where it's like, you know, you're part of the one. So because I wanted to start with pagan because then underneath of that is where the Wiccan religion starts to really form. Um, I don't know if this should be a picture or not, if I, if I should read it off, but I will be posting some pictures of my cards. You guys know I like my cards, my note cards to keep me focused, but one of the cards that I wrote, eh, it's really hard to see. Okay. I just wrote out, look for the picture after the meeting, but religious versus spiritual. So if you're religious, that's Wicca. There's a written text. It's an order. It's a recognized religion. You follow somebody else's ideas where if you're spiritual, which is more the pagan side of it, you're just enlightened. Like you don't have to assign yourself another name besides, I know there's something bigger out there than me. And I honor that. The official doctrine, if you're going to join a Wiccan community, you should know they have a, an official doctrine. And if they don't take warning, that's all I'm going to say about that. People can <laughs> create anything, which is also called cults. Not saying that Wiccan religion is a cult in any way, but if they don't follow something, if they're not registered, if they're not out there in the public eye of some kind, it could be a cult. On the spiritual side, just knowing the divine presence is enough for you. Your, your text is watching nature and watching the order of things. Religiously, this is run by rules and laws by quotations, man, woman, man, whatever people who are prophets, that is in no disrespect, but I'm just saying it's like, it comes from another place. It's not something you decided. Whereas in spirituality, you're observing the laws of nature or the universe. That is your book. That is your law. That's what you're ruled by. Um, 
religious side, it's structured by others. So what you learn, how you learn it, when you learn it, that's all the religious side. Whereas in spiritual, you're structured by your life lessons. Oftentimes our life leads us to things <laughs> that force us to learn. It doesn't matter if you wanted to learn it, <laughs> you're gonna be forced to learn it or you take the initiative before something happens or after it happens to learn for yourself. So that's the difference in like religious versus spiritual because you have pagan and Wiccan, which is spiritual versus religious, but that's really the deciding factors like on structure so that you know, because the whole point of this is that if you guys were ever pondering, you can make better decisions now because you'll have the information. And there is nothing wrong with either unless it's a cult. I don't know. I should say, I want people to be worried about cults. I've just heard too many bad things about people being drawn in Wicca. In well, and, 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 I, and I have to say, so for anybody on here who is, who wants to follow the Wicca, Wiccan path, I understand that because it provides a lot of structure, uh -huh. but uh -huh. one of the reasons why I personally, and I happen to know my daughter also has chosen this path is because we like to do what we want. And so we don't like people telling us what to do. And so with the, the pagan path or the witch path, we can decide which of these elements from all these different sources that are witch related, witchcraft related, Wiccan related, whatever, Deity. pagan related, Deity. all these things we yeah. can choose. And you can too, as a witch, you can choose what you want to incorporate and make a part of your life. Yes. Whereas if you choose to follow Wicca or become a Wiccan, I guess that's how you said that, right? It's all structured. You're, it's just like joining any other religious order or following any other re religion, like Christianity believes and does certain things. And Jew, uh, so do um, the Jewish, Judo, I'm not saying the name right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Judaism and the other, other religions. So that's, I think, is the really important distinction. And especially as you're starting out as a very young witch, is if you're trying to figure out what you want to do, the easier path might be to go Wiccan a day in a year and have somebody telling you what to do if you're okay with that. Yeah. And if you don't mind being fed things at their time, but we are not, she and I, we're not like that. We're like, we're going to make our own path. So path from a it's one path. of the decisions if you haven't made yet, or if you're like on the fence or wherever you are, just know that either way is okay. Just whatever you're comfortable with. Just watch right. out for Always. the ones that are, you know, say they are a coven. And sometimes that stuff gets weird, you know, because <laughs> people want to control. Well, I read a story about a, a girl who was like, she was new to the coven. And I read this, I think, on one of the witch groups that I follow. But she was new to the coven. And so they told her as the new witch in the coven, or whatever they called her. I don't even think they called her a witch yet. The initiate. Yeah, the initiate. She had to supply the snacks for every time they met, for everybody, for like a whole year. I'm like, well, how fair is that? You know, you got to bring all the snacks. I mean, I like to, you know, help out, but like, how do you stick that on one person? But they dictated that to her. I'm like, oh yeah, see, I would have a big problem with that. Yeah, in, in that regard, there are a lot of stories that are out there um, and people are afraid to come forward and I get that too. But if you if you choose to work with other people just make sure it's always on your terms too don't ever let somebody tell you that you have to do something because it's in the name of whatever no name no name should ever be able to tell you what to do in the name of whatever ever ever um all right with that i wasn't sure if you guys wanted to know things that are considered pagan versus uh wiccan but i love the old um deities like greek roman all of that so in case you also like it, these are things that are just pagan and you don't have to associate them with any um, religious aspects. You can just honor them in the way that you see. And it's it's as an archetype. And it's th what that means is that there's an energy that lives on after the thing or the story has happened that you call into yourself or you call forth for help. And so these things are like the Celtic, I cannot say any of their names. So God bless you if you can. But <laughs> <laughs> Any of the Celtic names uh, of the gods or goddesses, deities, force gods, they have a lot. They're very, very earth-centric there. 
But Roman and Greek, who doesn't love Zeus well, and, and that, you Artemis? Paleo, and pa pa paleo pagan. Lisa I, I, yeah. was the Celtics. So they actually, they niched down different types of pagans. And you've got neo-pagan, which is just like Wiccan or a solitary witch. And then you've got paleo-pagan, which because it was a long time ago, that's the Celtic, Roman, Greek, and Germanic um, stories, practices, gods, goddesses, which are awesome. Juno, Jupiter. Mars, you know, all the great names. Uh, and then there's there's the Meso or Meso pagan, which is more now people that still exist. It's going to be aboriginals, both in Australia and in America. Any of the Viking Age Norse people, that's still considered a, a pagan religion. You know, if, if anybody remembers like 20, 25 years ago, when they started putting books on the shelf under this crazy section called New Age, that's all they could come up with for the word. New age is also pagan and it's new age spirituality. They've added at least something more descriptive on it than new age, but new age spirituality is considered a mesopagan. Um, voodoo, if anybody's familiar with voodoo, Haitian uh, practices, and then Santeria, of course, which has a terrible name. I don't really know anybody who does that, but Santeria is also mesopagan. Meso, meso. Everyone just uh, say that word. All right, I'm gonna retire that one. That is pagan. If you guys have any questions about pagan stuff, go ahead and type it in. We're gonna come back to it. So I'm moving on to Wicca because Wicca has this crazy, interesting, freaking weird tale, like a movie. If you've ever researched Wicca, it's nuts. So I wrote this card and the card, I named it, the comeback of nature-based religions, right? Because at some point in our history through the world, not just, in, this is not America, this is like the world, people had to start deciding that Christianity wasn't for them. And what were they gonna do? Because the entire world seemed to be Christian, right? In this world that was recording history and not burning libraries. Um, so this actually started way back in the 1700s with the Freemasons. Has anybody ever been intrigued by Freemasonry and kind of like their whole secret society and all of the mist and see lore? Jeffrey shaking his head. I mean, yeah, right. Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. I've walked past their buildings and I'm going like, damn, what secrets do they hold in there? Like, really? They've been credited with a lot of stuff. But the Freemasons were actually the first to break away from the Gothic culture where they were building all of these uh, um, what cathedrals. Are they cathedrals. Thank you, Molly. Cathedrals. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Gothic cathedrals. So when there was not a need for them anymore, they tried to set themselves up to be something different. And you know, they were the first organization that had freedom of religion in our modern times, because this is technically modern. Um, the Freemasons decided that anybody could join that was not a woman. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Any man. Any man could join. I bet he had to be white too. No. No, no actually. Really? No color and no, there was, it didn't matter about race or, um, this is the 1700s. Though. This is a, yes. It was all over the world. They okay. built these places. So anybody who was a well, builder could join this. Any male who was a builder could join this. And so they built this organization and they were allowed to start little distinct, you know, um, Groups temples. And... No, they called them temples actually mm -hmm. after the temple of Solomon, because they considered themselves great builders. Um, anybody was allowed to join with whatever religion they had which was really great so here is the cool thing if you joined a temple and you had five different people of five different religions they had to display religious texts on each religion in their center hall that is very effing cool because this is the 1700s where there was persecution of a lot of things and these people were very accepting now okay it's only men but this was the first acceptance of like, we are all one, we have a greater purpose. And their goals were, they had core values of knowledge and um, sociability. No, it was knowledge and sociability. So they were built off of freedom of religion, knowledge and sociability. That was their thing to get in. And you had to be a man. But what was really cool for me is the only thing that they had to admit in their initiation, so it was an initiation practice, they had to admit that there was a supreme being they didn't have to say which one. That's where freedom of religion came in. And then they were not allowed to talk about any politics. So this became a really safe place for men, unfortunately, just men to talk about metaphysical stuff or, you know, pseudo psychic, pseudo science, pseudo whatever, because back then it wasn't considered real. 
And this is where the great ideas started forming because they were allowed to have these conversations without being persecuted by anybody else. So that's where all the secrecy came in, the symbols. This is the first place where you find ritual magic, which leads me to our next thing. A hundred years later, we have the Hermanic Order of the Golden Dawn. If you've ever done some research into Wicca, you know that the Golden Dawn is sort of mentioned in there somewhere. Well, Alistair Crowley and some other people met a guy who was in the Golden Dawn and blah, 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 blah. They all got together and decided they'd create their own religion. And then they had a change of heart on who would call it what. Fast forward to 1950. Gerald Gardner decided he didn't want what Alistair Crowley was doing. He didn't want the other stuff. He just decided, I'm going to take all these other things that I know and I'm going to build them into one thing. And I want it to be called Wicca. Now, <laughs> This is where my history of words comes in. You guys know I'm a super nerd, right? Like super, super nerdy nerd. witch, super, super nerd. And I only, I find this important because if you've ever wondered, like, where does the word witch come from? What does it really mean? Who decided we were called witches? Who decided anybody was called a witch? Is it really that derogatory? How did they get a relationship with the devil? Blah, 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 on and on. I want you to know that in old English, 1600s time, there was a word all right, I'm going to really try to show my card. I should, we should write this in the, in the thing. This appears correct, everybody, right? P-I-C-C-E. I hope everybody can see that. All right. That is an old English word. And although it looks like it would be pronounced pika, the way that you actually say it is wecha. So what does that sound like? Sounds like freaking witch. So Gerald Gardner and all of his worldly knowledge, because him and Aleister Crowley, they traveled to like, every country, every continent, and they discovered, all, not discovered, they uh, recorded all these different religions and like the Hindus and what people in India were doing and all over the world. And they figured out this word, the looks like Pika, but it's pronounced Wicha, means the same thing. It means sorcerer or one with knowledge. So he decided to name his new religion Wicca, which is actually the way that if you put it into new English, it would be spelled. That weird P that I showed you, is a W in New English. So the word went from Wicha to Witch to Wicca. And thank you. Listen, that was a <laughs> lot and seen on that, okay? That, just to know where that word might come from and why we choose to call ourselves that still today, we're not, you don't have to. Because now knowing it, does it make sense for you to call yourself that? I don't know. Um, the source of that, I will post this again as a picture, but the source is on entomology geek, which is basically entomologygeek.com. I will post it so you guys can look it up. But it's just really cool that how the F did we start getting called witches and where did that even come from? Gerald Gardner helped bring that into fruition. If for anything else, I really like him for that because I like the word witch. I do. I like its connotation, good and bad. <laughs> okay. I am gonna move on from that. All right, I did that card too. And we're getting into, I'm doing so great, 622, love it. Okay. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So we've covered Pagan. Pagan, which Wicca. is, yeah. And Wicca. Kind, or, did I say Wicca? Wait, Wicca. Pagan and Wicca. Yeah. Wiccan or Wicca. Wicca, Wiccan. And then, and then, and now we like, we're breaking into which. Which, Is that where we're going with which? I want so. to go into which because this is which today, modern, you don't have to have a definition for. It is the most widely used word to encompass a group of people or practices that nobody can really create a single definition for, which is amazing. I love it because it... To me, witch equal sign freedom. That's all it means to me. You have no religious sect. You don't have anything you're expected to do or not expected to do. You can be around anybody you want to. It doesn't matter if you do spells or don't do spells. It doesn't matter if you do rituals or don't do witch rituals. Um, the biggest thing with being a witch is that you know that you're honoring the earth and you're trying to live a more eco-friendly life. That's nature-based stuff. But then everything that comes after that is like up to the discretion of the practitioner, right? We're all witch practitioners, in case you didn't know. <laughs> so if you be a do or do not wish to uh, honor deities, you 
that's you don't your have choice. to. That's you right. Don't, you don't have to do that. Someone asked that question. So yeah, you don't, I, I don't have any deities that I, that I worship or honor or have on my altar or anything like that. Cause I haven't figured that out yet. I am, I am doing research on my own family history um, just to see if there's anyone that I can connect with, because I feel like I want that. Um, but I haven't found it yet. And I'm, I'm new. I'm probably new. Like some of you guys um, two, two and a half years into this uh, path. It's been that long already. I think wow. it's been longer. It feels longer. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure that sounded positive, but no, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's well, a lot. It's, it's a lot there's a lot of learning. Yes. That, so even though, so Jamie wrote, I want to <laughs> want to show <laughs> you what she wrote card. on her card. It's so hard she to wrote, see it which then. the easy road. I don't know if I really <laughs> agree with that because I think it would be easier to actually have somebody tell me what to do, except that I already know myself and I don't want to be told what to do. I want to figure out what I like and I want to pick and choose. And maybe you do too, but I have a great comeback for that. I have a great comeback to that. What's up? <laughs> On one of my cards, I started to write the key points to being a modern witch. Modern and witch. A modern witch, because we can't be old witches. There's no documentation. As much as people want to say lineage and all of that stuff, great, fine. If that makes you feel better about what you do, I understand that. I own my aloneness. It's the human condition. Listen, I'm researching my ancestry to see if there's a witch some back there, you know, back there somewhere, like the dental witches. I'm like, I'm looking to see if there's some connection because I just feel like there is. Like, I know I'm connected to royalty somewhere back there. I'm English and uh, Irish, so 97% British or something like that, British Isles. So I know there's some royalty in my blood. I mean, I'm Irish and English. Because I'm like so the princess in the know. pea, you know, I can't stand, you know. <laughs> Lord. off subject okay <laughs> a key point to being a modern witch i didn't get very far i got one point <laughs> that's why i'm saying it's kind of funny because your intuition and i'm really really serious we're laughing and joking but i'm really serious like your intuition is more valid than any book you'll ever read than any person you'll ever listen to than any history lesson you'll ever learn because it comes from within us. I want you to understand that by giving you all the knowledge of this stuff from before, where do you think they got it from? They didn't just listen to somebody else and replicate. They started their own thing. My, my whole goal is to have people build their practice to suit them. I never want them to be replicas of anybody else. It takes away your uniqueness. It takes away your individuality and your own thoughts. If you have to drone under somebody else, where are your, where's the new anything going to come from? It's not, you're, it'll be a copy. So for me, that's what being a modern witch is. I don't have to listen to anybody. I obviously do no harm. Okay. There, if there's like one rule, it's do no harm, but I don't well, have to respect to nature is another really important. Not just, come, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's it. doing no harm though. It's do no harm to yourself. Do no harm to nature. Do no harm to animals as much as you can. The whole thing, you know, yeah. it, it's just do no harm. And this, this all started with way back with just trying to be equal to everything in your environment. And if you see yourself as equal to everything in your environment, how do you treat it? You honor it because it, you need it to survive and it needs you to survive in some cases. So build your practice off of what suits you. That's what being a witch is to me. There is no true definition. It is whatever you want it to be. It is not Wiccan. It is not pagan. A witch is an individual. If you choose to be a Wiccan witch, perfect. Join a coven and do great things. If you choose to be a solitary witch or, you know, I thought about all the list of witches that they have on like Instagram and Pinterest, like kitchen witch and herbal witch and divination witch and travel witch and water witch. And I don't even know. There's too many. That's your focus. That's cool. Be a water witch for a year. Be a divination witch for a year, you know, and just explore that. But that just tells you, what you're into for that time. You shouldn't stay that. Tankers, it's fine, it's fine, we're okay. I don't know if you can hear our dog growling, but he's like upset about something at the door. Um, so that's being a modern witch, that's my card. So with you saying <laughs> what you said, I feel like that was a very appropriate. It's learning and growing on your own time, which is different from Wicca, because you're only allowed to get information as they give it to you. Um, so the, should I explain so, that? Well, no, the one thing I would like to add to that though, because I am new um, and I am finding my path. Yeah. And, um, and so for me, it is kind of helpful to identify with one of those types of witches 
like the traditional witch, the hedge witch, the green witch, the solitary witch. They, like, you know, where is my focus? Like, what yeah. is it that I believe in? And yes. what kind of practices do I want to incorporate into my daily life? And so for me, those, those labels are somewhat helpful because I can pick and choose and say, well, this one really feels like me. And I think, you know, I call myself a solitary witch because I don't want to be um, a part of a group necessarily where I get to, you know, where other people are telling me what to do. A solitary witch, you just read everything about witchcraft and then whatever, for me anyway, this is how I'm doing it, is what I connect with, what I, what resonates with me, then I'm going to incorporate that into my life and my practice and my day-to-day, -day, you know, thanking the universe that for all, all of the things I have. So I just want to mention that about uh the labels because sometimes we do get hung up on labels and we almost like i feel like we almost need them so we can define ourselves we really don't but sometimes i think as people we do because otherwise then what i'm not sure if you guys have comments about that please chime in in the chat and we'll talk about that in a minute um it's fine tank is Tank is the, my dog and my other daughter is here. She's in the back room looking through some pictures right now. So Tank's not sure what's going on. And he's, he's the guard dog. So he's saving us from my sister in the back room. Yeah, right now. exactly. He's trying to anyways. Okay. Um, okay. So with being a witch, because we're going to open it for questions in about four minutes, because I hope you guys have a ton of them to clarify your own path or what's going on. And this will probably be another one that I post to the pictures part of it. So if you want to come back for information, but if you have no path in mind, right? Like maybe you're still undecided and that is okay. I went undecided and alone for a very long time. And, you know, I took breaks and I did stuff and I took breaks and I did stuff. Witchcraft is there when you need it. You don't always have to be doing it. So don't feel bad if you're not like every day doing something towards it, but Here's other practices to help you on your spiritual journey. So where we have witches and witchcraft, you also have just this total spiritual journey that doesn't have to involve being an actual witch and doing magic, spells, rituals, communing. Because, can I interrupt here for a second, interject? One because hand. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, and you guys chime in too if you've heard something different, but I believe what rich witchcraft means it actually means that you practice magic so that is the if, if i'm if i'm not mistaken, ritual and magic yeah. the the definition of witchcraft is that you are practicing magic so you're doing spells you're doing rituals yeah is that right that, that's practicing yes, witchcraft is, yeah which okay. doesn't it's still well i guess what i was saying is like you don't have to do it every day if you get to that point if you're always mindful because that's kind of mindfulness with it um because spells don't have to be long and thought out and, they, and rituals don't have to be that either it's just what you it's always keeping your mind in the present of what I'm trying to attract or do or feel so I'll share a story about her oh, so yeah. every morning <laughs> when she makes her coffee wow. and she stirs in her you know she pours her coffee in she pours in the whatever your creamer and cinnamon. creamer and cinnamon and then she stirs it in clockwise for intention and so she sets her intention for the day which i think that's really lovely it's a really great way to start your day like today i'm going to whatever your intentions are for the day i'm going to have a great day even though you might have a lot of crap going on but it's going to be a beautiful day and so as she stirs in her morning coffee that very start of the day that's a ritual that's my that's one of my that's rituals. that's a way to connect with this like every day and i i love that so i just wanted to share that really quick well, and I want you guys to know that I don't think of anything super clever or that rhymes. I'm, you know, it's usually like <laughs> 6 30 in the morning and I've just woke up. So I have my coffee pot on autopilot. So it's just ready when I get there. <laughs> and I say what comes to mind. This is where I tell you to like build your practice that feels really natural to yourself. When you're speaking to the universe, when you're speaking to the source, whatever you believe in, like speak to it like it's your best friend. Because I just kind of say in a general thing is, I'm creating the life I want in, in line with the universe. Like I, it's not always about the want, but sometimes it's like I'm manifesting. And I use these different words that just come to my mind at 6.30 in the morning when I'm kind of groggy. And, and then I just go with it. And I don't, key point, I don't judge myself. If I don't say it right, if I like stutter in my own head, if I, I don't really say it out loud, but if I was to stutter literally in my own head, I, 
I'm today I'm what am I doing today? I'm I am, <laughs> you know, I do that. And that is 100 percent okay. And it's just the act of doing it that then once I say it and I can say it like three, four more times where I don't stutter, that's when you get the feeling of like <sighs> you're setting the intention okay. for the day. Yeah. Right. With that repetition. That's what you do. Yeah. You're you're doing a, an act, which is the you're stirring. You're calling it to yourself. And then you're saying the words either in yeah. your head or out loud. And you are. You're calling that vibration, that energy to yourself. You want to say hi? <laughs> Here's the missing witch that you guys don't see yeah. often. Here's the hi guys. Say hi. <laughs> the little one. Sorry. I'd love to join, but looking through some old photo albums, had yeah. a friend pass away. So I'm gonna I'm share gonna... some photos with her kids. I'm not gonna talk about that. You guys have to do that. Okay, we can't talk about that. I can't talk about it because I already spent two hours crying this morning. Um, so what I was gonna say before all of this was just practices to improve your spiritual journey. Yes, your witch journey, yes, your Wiccan journey, all of it applies, pagan journey, everything. But this is where, um, oh, you know, I think I didn't actually read that part of the damn card. Okay. One of the things that I love that I found out about all the men that actually started the Wiccan and all of the things that, you know, now led me to this point and made it so available for everybody is that there was a thing, there was a thing. Uh, it's here, mom. Hold on. Where is I? Uh, what was it? It's advancement of self. I don't know what I actually wrote down oh, on the card. Yeah, but I saw that knowledge and knowledge rituals, ritual no. items, advance through levels, learning more no. secrets. No. That's how they get into the order. Okay, uh, secret sayings, handshakes, initiation. No, that's all part of the thing. Okay, blah blah blah. Secrets blah, blah. to study. Shit, I don't I know. Go. Okay, okay. here's what it is. I'm so sorry. Just grab the card. That's no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was it was for the advancement of self. When they first started this, it was for the advancement of self. They being these all guys over those here, old people. I don't know. All the dudes I'm, back in the seventeen those, and eighteen and nineteen. Well, probably more like eighteen to nineteen and nineteen fifties. Okay. But when they decided that they would create a, and they did, they did an order of the Golden Dawn. The Order of the Golden Dawn is right in between the Freemasons and then like Wicca, which okay. was Alistair Crowley and, and a couple other guys. Okay. And, and they were good. They were getting there. But that's when they started looking into like paranormal activity and the, the things that nobody would talk about in public. Now, remember, tarot cards have been being used since like the 800s. People took them as a fun game. Part well, of the games. Right. So when you started getting into like the 16 and 1700s, where you went to people like that, you went to readers to figure out things that were going on in your family or your future. That was very secret. And people, some people took it very seriously and other people were like, no, 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 it's just a game. That's why on the tarot cards today for the right of weight, it's still listed as US game systems because they don't want to be responsible if you get told a future that then happens or some kind of destruction, they can't take claim for that. So my whole point was that, what was my whole point? Mm. Damn it. Okay, but we'll move on to uh, practices anyway, to improve your spiritual journey. Yeah, your, your, it was personal improvement. That was my point. My point. My point was personal improvement. So, if you don't, but if you don't want to be Wiccan, pagan, or a witch, and you don't have to be, you can still be on a spiritual journey, which I always am. If I had no label, I'd be on a spiritual journey still. And I wrote down things that I've probably talked about on every single meetup, but things that you can do if you really do want to grow spiritually for yourself meditation i know it sounds kooky and it's so new age and whatever but when you sit with yourself and you try to eliminate your thoughts that's what meditation is eliminate your ego thoughts and let yourself be in just whatever state that is like where you when you first start to meditate all these like i didn't do this i forgot to do that what about my relationship problem with that all this other shit comes in and you just really don't need it that doesn't necessarily help you on your path because that's the future or the past that you're thinking about. It's being present. Meditation teaches you to be present. Once you can be present, you start enjoying the things and you decide that you're not going to feel emotions that aren't helpful to your journey. After that, it's journaling. Write everything down because you'll notice that the things that you think then start to happen or you start to call them to yourself. Visualizations of stuff you want start to happen. Mantras are a huge thing for me. I put them around to help me stay in a state of awareness. So mantras, 
Um, the Buddhist breathing technique, I can't say I'm a professional at this. I don't really do it. I do something called tapping. It's where you calm yourself down by hitting different pressure points on your body because I have PTSD and I learned it there. And it's a lot like that though, where you just breathe until the feeling of whatever you're feeling goes away. And you find yourself back at like peace and harmony. Um, mindfulness, that's just being aware of what's going through your mind and you're not going crazy and having road rage. Used to do that a lot. I don't need a story. <laughs> She's told it too many times. Um, kindness to strangers. All right, this is with judgment too. When you are out in public and there is somebody you absolutely don't know and you're frustrated with them, put yourself in their shoes and imagine what they could be going through. And instead of reacting with like uh, impatience or judgment or whatever, it's like, we have no idea what just happened to that person. I often imagine the worst case scenario. My husband had a daughter who was murdered. And so I always think that for people, like what was their worst day in their life? I know what that looks like for somebody else. So can we do that to provide ourselves with like patience, sympathy, empathy for that person, kindness to strangers in whatever way you can. Even when they're assholes. Let's admit, because there's a lot of them out there that are jerks. They cut you off in traffic. They're rude at the supermarket. You know they're what you guys say? They're just rude all over. Yeah. You know, they're you're just here. in a big hurry and you're, speed you're, around you're you. You're going on too long. Going on. Oh, sorry. All right. You know what you got to say to them is, I hope that you find your peace. I hope that you find your happiness. Because like whatever they're rushing around to do, it's obviously not their desire. Because if it was their desire, they'd be happy, right? They'd be like, I'm on the road to East Street right now. I'm happy. I don't care. how. Don't fast let me make her no. tell the story of the lady dumping trash in her neighborhood today and catching her there. So anyway, we'll move on. It was a cigarette. <laughs> she was rude. As hell. <laughs> We're not going to tell that story because, nope. you know, anyway, I had a day. I had a day. Um, nature walks. Being in nature and being one with nature with no other people around is amazing. If you sit and just watch the things that are happening, that's how you can get back in tune with what's going on around you and appreciate it. For all the people out there who eat meat of any kind, like that's one of the things. Imagine yourself going out there and getting that food for them. And then like, do you appreciate that animal, that place, the grass they ate, the sunshine that it took to grow it? Like coming full circle with just nature and what it takes to sustain you. I will end with that. Um, I also have donating to shelters because I love that. The people who work there don't really get paid much. And so when I come and bring a donation, I feel like that I'm helping them earn a paycheck. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I have all my old towels and sheets. And then gardening, of course. Anytime you can get your hands in the dirt and commune with plants, like it's it's just part of nature's body. It's what feeds us and keeps us alive, right? Oxygen is built from plants. We breathe it, we need it. Love on them. Oh, I had a quote. I've never done a quote on this ever, ever, ever. But I heard this this week and I felt like it was so appropriate for us because as witches, you really, you can read like a million books, but until you do something, you really don't know. So my quote was, the only source of knowledge is experience. That hit me hard. That's by Mr. Albert E., Mr. Einstein, who was so so obsessed with doing shit that he decided he would buy the same outfit and wear it his whole life. So like he only had the same shirt, like six or seven of the same shirts, pants, trousers, jacket, boxers, whatever. So he never had to decide what he was wearing. It was always there. It was the exact same stuff. That's how he cut back his stuff. That eliminates decision fatigue. So decision you know, fatigue. You don't have to think about wait a minute, what was that about a cult? Occult, occult practices. practices. Well, okay. Oh, we're going to talk about that. No, it's just that occult comes up as a word a lot of times. So, in case anybody wasn't familiar with the definition of occult, it's anything that's not science technically. So, when we do tarot cards, mediumship, things that they still can't prove, law of attraction, all of that, it's whatever falls outside of modern science and religion is considered a cult. So, if you call yourself an occultist, also okay. Nobody does that really, but dabbling in the occult yeah also an okay thing to say for yourself i put divinations because that's really like what stands out but everything that's considered divination is like even astrology and horoscopes is considered divination yeah, i feel like that's just regular reading but okay all right i am 100 done on my cards and i'm so ready for questions because i went a little over time it is 6 44 okay all right